Okay, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state of Nebraska and across the country, actually. We are now, I guess, a national show. Sure. We have people from all over the country on with us right now today. Um, we do these sessions live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, so you can join us on Wednesdays if you want to. However, if you're unable to join us, that's fine. We do record everything. Um, so we have all four years now into our fourth year of Encompass Live um, archives on our website. So you can go there and watch anything that you might have missed. Uh, we do all sorts of things here, presentations, interviews, uh, Tremits, sort of little mini training sessions. We only have an hour, but you know we do our best. Um, basically, anything related to libraries, we'll put it on the show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but and this morning, um, and we do have commission staff that do this. Our own library commission staff that do some sessions, and we do bring in, bring in guest speakers from across the state, um, libraries across the state, or from across the country. And today we have a kind of a mixture of that. I'm here. Um, sitting next to me right now is um, Michael Sowers, who is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Morning. And, and he is going to help me um, with today's session because it is a little more techie than I am. Um, um, comfortable? Yeah, comfortable. <laughs> I, not, I don't know. I can do a lot, but sometimes some things just go, I, I, and I, I'm, no, gonna I'm totally a, willing to admit that. On a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably a 7 or an 8 for what we usually do. Is it? So, yeah. yeah um. It is, but I also would say that it's not something, I know we're talking about this, I haven't told you what it is, except what's up on the screen there. It's not something to be scared of. I've seen no. the instructions, and it's something if you just put your mind to it. I know you screwed up, but we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a good yeah, lesson. No, no, that's um, part of why I'm here. You can yeah. do this yourself. Anyway, what we all, we also have on the line with us. Let's get to this now. Is um, Jason Griffey, and I'm going to unmute you. I'm going to try to. Jason, are you there? Hey guys. Hello. I Hello. am. Um, he is. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. <laughs> Head of Library IT at the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga. So he is on the line with us to tell us about his. Um, Library box, which um, I'm gonna. I don't know. Do you want? How do you want to? Um, no, I, th I think we'll let Jason kind of just uh, take on over here. So we're gonna send presentation uh, uh, control over to him, which should take just a moment. Okay. To in here. Um, Jason, Give me two while, seconds. Yeah. While it's doing that, why don't you give us a, a little bit about your background, where you're coming from, and then uh, tell us what this is all sure. about. So, hi. Um, hi, everyone. I was going to say hi, state of Nebraska, but that uh, is not actually true. I guess we do have people from all over. So, uh, thank you guys for joining us this morning, and uh, thanks to Krista and Michael for the invitation uh, to come and speak with you about this project. Um, so, what I'm planning on doing, at least at first, is just giving an overview, and then uh, Krista and Michael, feel free to chime in with questions, or uh, attendees chime in with questions on the chat. This is not going to be a formal presentation, because as yet, this is not really a formal project. Um, it's a side project that I've been working on, um, and trying to find a kind of a place for. So. So, okay, so li Library Box. What is Library Box? Well, um, the, the short answer is that Library Box is this little, uh, this little thing right here. Um, Library Box began as a, um, a project that I, I had an idea for because I was following a, an art project by a New York University uh, art professor named David Darts, uh, Dr. Darts did a, um, put together this, what I thought was an interesting, and I'll, um, I'll click over here, you guys, I'm using the web as my slides, so, um, he did what was, what was an interesting art project where he created, what he called Pirate Box, and Pirate Box was this um, hack that he put together of a, uh, what at the time was a pretty big router, uh, an actual Wi-Fi router, you can see the large lunch box there with the antenna sticking out the side. Um, it was a large wireless router with some storage and he managed to uh, kind of hack together a system with a big battery and a big router that would be a wireless access point that you could walk around with that was a file sharing box. So the idea with Pirate Box 
was that it was built to enable um, people to share files from their devices to the pirate box, and then the pirate box would share them else, you know, to anyone else that was connected. So it enabled totally anonymous, totally um, uh, mobile file sharing. Now um, he did this. Uh, Dr. Darts did this as, as an art project. So obviously, it doesn't take very long for uh, for people to realize that having a totally anonymous file sharing um, file sharing device might be something that would quickly devolve into um, copyright infringement or potentially other illegal uh, illegal activities. So um, as an art project, it was great. But as a tool, especially as a tool for kind of libraries and educators, I thought it was a little too dangerous, maybe. I don't know if dangerous is the right word, but, um, but certainly a little, uh, a, a little more than most educators or libraries would probably be willing to, uh, to, to take on. So the, the risk there, right, is just a little too high. So um, I started thinking about kind of how that would get changed, what, what needed to change about the, the project <clears throat> in order to make it something that was beneficial for libraries and beneficial for educators. And <clears throat> it really came down to just a, a few changes on um, some of the interface and a little bit of tweaking to make it work with some new devices. So I had thought about this when I originally saw the Pirate Box project. And then a couple of uh, this power box, it's open source. All of the code is freely available. This is something that the, 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 the software is all out there in the world. This is not proprietary or anything. You can, you can get in and hack away at it, no problem. Well, then back um, around Christmas, I guess, of last year, a little earlier probably, um, a couple of coders, uh, Matthias Drubel and uh, Christian Rutten uh, worked together to kind of port the Pirate Box project, the large kind of Pirate Box project, to these um, routers that would run open uh, firmware. So there's, if you look right in the, the, in the uh, video window there, from, this is a um, this is a router. This is a wireless router. This was originally designed to be actually a what a 3G repeater. So the idea, um, TP-Link, the company that makes this, sells this so that here on the side in the little USB port, you would put a 3G router, um, a 3G modem, you know, something that connects to the cellular network, and then the box translates that. 3G signal into Wi-Fi, standard Wi-Fi for your laptop or your cell phones or whatever, and um, and then you use you know you use standard Wi-Fi on your devices and it goes out through the 3G modem. Well, these um, uh, coders, uh, developers, figured out that with just a little bit of work, you could actually kind of change the function of this device. And to give you some idea, so. Pirate Box is something that was in a big lunchbox, right? It required big batteries and lots of power and everything. So this, the open WRT version uh, of, of Pirate Box, um, fits on a router. I've got a, a quarter here for scale. So um, that's a quarter. You can see how big this box is. It easily fits in a pocket. Uh, it's very, very tiny, and it weighs practically nothing. Um, the other kind of uh, benefit of moving the code onto something that would run on one of these boxes is, you can see right there, it's plugged in that little USB, the mini USB, or micro USB actually, sorry, the micro USB. That micro USB is the power, and it will run, this little box will run off of any USB power source. So right now, I have it connected to a battery, this little battery right here, um, that's designed to charge iPhones and uh, iPads, uh, but it will run off of any USB power source, uh, any, any, any number of things. Um, so 
once the Pirate Box project was ported, once these coders moved it over to uh, this little box, um, I thought, oh, now this has promise. Well, if, if I had to build a big lunch box full of lead acid batteries, it's a lot less interesting than building something that you could carry around in your pocket. So uh, that was the kind of the moment where I was like, okay, I could actually make this work. This might be something that was used. So I, uh, this was around, around the holidays of uh, 2011, uh, moving into uh, 2012, the new year there. And um, so I started taking a look at the code. And because the code is all open, uh, I was able to kind of dig in and figure out how the Pirate Box project worked. It's not um, totally straightforward, and especially the version that Library Box is based on. Again, this is months and months ago, so the, uh, the Pirate Box project is an active project that's still being worked on. Um, but the, the code that I was using uh, was, I, I won't say difficult, but, but challenging. It took a little while to kind of wrap my brain around what was going on. But, um, but once I did, was able to um, make it a bit more friendly for what I would consider kind of um, uh, library or, or educational use. So uh, I took the Pirate Box project, which was again a file sharing right tool, uh, upload download. Um, I eliminated the upload portion of it. So the library box is a read only device. Um, whoever is in control of the box can put files onto it. That's actually the thumb drive that you see, the little little tiny uh, little tiny USB drive that you can see right there. That's actually the uh, file storage. That's where all of the uh, content of my library box lives. And uh, so you can you can put digital files on that. You take this router and plug in some power and it becomes a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can connect to and download any of the content from. So it is, in effect, a, um, a portable digital library, right? Um, I haven't mentioned the important thing about uh, the, the, the box. Um, I mean, it's small and it doesn't take much power, uh, which are huge. Those are big advantages. But this, the router itself, costs $40 um, on uh, uh, websites. You can order it online for about 40, 35 to 40 bucks. So it is incredibly inexpensive <laughs> for the flexibility and what you can do with it. Um, uh, $40 is a, a, a pittance for, uh, for what it does. So, um, so that's the project. I'm going to show you quickly, I guess, kind of how it works and what what the user interface and stuff looks like. Um, Michael, Krista, any questions? Anybody asking anything so far? Do you have anything? Uh, no, no I, we're, we're good at this point. Um, I, I think you had a, uh, a, a new egg page up there where you could show people where they could I did. order one of these if you want to yeah. pull that up. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, new egg uh, is, the, is a company, it's a, a online, you know, Electronic retailer, for those of you who have not used it before, they have uh, the cheapest price on lots of different pieces of electronics, but this one is just under $40. Um, that's, the, that's the hardware that I'm using for yeah. the project. So. Um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and, and, and show how it works from, from the user end of things, and, and then we, sure. we can kind of go on from there. Sure. Okay. So, so, uh, so I've got library box, and it's connected to a, uh, connected to a battery. It's on. You can, maybe see the little green lights there that show you that it's on. So I'm going to move it out of the frame and um, show you how you might use this. All right. So, all right. So here's my iPhone. It's a cute picture of my daughter. You know, you know, that's the way things go. So I'm doing this upside down. Forgive me if I... No, go away, boxcar. Okay, so it's currently connected to the Wi-Fi for my at, at my place of work. I'm in my office, so I'm going to take a look to see if there are other Wi-Fi spots available. And sure enough, you can see Library Box. I hope you can see that. 
Krista and uh, Michael tell me if for some reason you can't. But, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's coming through quite If I connect, okay, excellent. So if I connect to Library Box, uh, the the little again the little router is sending out Wi-Fi signals. I can connect. At that point, I'm connected to the box, and the box acts as a captive portal. So if I try to go to any website, so I'm going to go blah, blah, blah. Can't type on your iPhone upside down? Uh, I can, it's just a little harder. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so if, if I go to any website, I, I just typed in google.com, it gives me this page. And the 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 router is is any any website you go to. It doesn't matter. It's going to redirect you to this. Now the box is not. It's not connected to the internet. It's not part of a wider network. It is its own network. It's its own hotspot. Um, so it's directly serving this web page, right? So you get this little web page that says library box. And then it says, I'll make it a little bigger so it's easier to see, download content here. So if I hit download content here, it gives me a list of all of the contents of the box. It's a little small because uh, the, there's a lot on here. But you can see I have uh, lots of Lewis Carroll, Jonathan Swift, Jane Austen, etc. So I'm going to choose one of these. Let's say I'd like to read uh, oh, Gulliver's Travels. I haven't read that in a long time. So I'm going to choose Gulliver's Travels. I'm going to, I've got um, on here I have both an EPUB version and a, and a uh, Kindle friendly version um, just because I've decided that's what I wanted to load. I'm going to choose the EPUB because I know that I've got an EPUB reader. So John, ah, upside down, iPad, iPhoning. Okay. So I, I tell it I want to download the EPUB from Library Box. It says, oh, hey, this is an EPUB. Do you want to open it in iBooks, or do you want to open it in one of the other things you've got on your, you know, on my device that will read EPUBs? I'm just going to open it in iBooks. So it will download it and open it up. So that's Gulliver's, Gulliver's Travels. Uh, it's now resident on my device, um, downloaded from the library box, and I can read it wherever I want. So what I what what is on my library box is a series of um, of uh, out of copyright, right, public domain works. So I've uh, I've loaded it full of roughly the top one hundred books from uh, Project Gutenberg uh, so that uh, when I walk around at conferences, I have people downloading books from me. Um, or when I take this, uh, when I take this, you know, out into the out into the world, uh, I can be a portable download portable download spot for uh, for books for anyone who happens to have a device like a mobile phone. It works with um, Android, uh, iOS. Uh, I have not tested it with the new Windows operating system, Windows Phone 8 Service Pack 8 Phone. I don't know exactly what it's called these days, but um, I haven't tested it with it. Uh, it works fine with computers, right? Anything, anything with a Wi-Fi signal, more or less, because it's acting just like a, uh, a, a web page. It's, it's delivering the, um, the content just exactly like uh, any other web server would. So the idea of having a the idea of having a digital library that people can use to download books um, to their mobile devices and have that library in your pocket and be able to build that library for forty dollars and a little bit of time seems like it could have a lot of legs to me. That seems like something that um, the use cases are, I think, varied and interesting. Um, any questions about the 
use or about how it works with uh, how it works with with various devices or anything? Yeah, we've uh, we've gotten a couple of questions coming sure. from the audience, and and I've I've always got my own uh, that okay. So Joey is asking, uh, can any Wi-Fi router be used, or does it specifically need to be that one? Yeah. Um, you can use any Wi-Fi router that will run the OpenWRT software. So um, the Pirate Box project, the fork that I'm using, or the, the kind of branch that I'm using, not really a fork, the branch that I'm using, um, uses OpenWRT, which is a, an open source firmware replacement for a variety of routers. And technically, it should work. Uh, the LibraryBox customizations should work on any on anything that runs Open um, That said, this is the least expensive option uh, that I found. The the TP-Link, the MR3020, uh, the TP-Link MR3020, um, is the least expensive way to do it. There are in um, in other. I'll show you one other piece of hardware that I've got. Um, there is another piece of hardware that is also made by TP-Link. The uh, 703N. I'll put it right there. It's even smaller than the MR3020. This little thing right here. It theoretically runs OpenWRT, and um, I am working to kind of make sure that Pirate Box version two runs on it as well, so that we have a couple of different um, couple of different versions. But for um, for me telling you it will definitely work, this is the hardware that I know it will definitely work on. Yeah, and and we'll, when we get to my story, I think we'll talk about that, and we'll we'll, we'll yeah. talk about we'll talk about code and how you actually make this work in the first. Mm -hmm. Maybe yes, absolutely. I, I'll just clarify what you're doing to the router is basically like if you were to take your computer, wipe the OS, and install a completely different operating system. That's what you're doing with the router. You are installing a new operating yes. system on the router. Um, yes. So I, I, I'll, I'll kind of anticipate where Joey was coming from. Is that well? What if I've got a you know a spare Linksys sitting in the back room that we haven't used in a while? Theoretically, I might be able to do it on that, um, and wouldn't cost Absolutely. anything. But it's also going to be a bigger Absolutely. piece of equipment, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes, and the the kind of again the the Linksys that you have setting the, the spare Linksys is probably going to run off of um, off of standard you know power, uh, <clears throat> which right. for lots of use cases is is probably fine if you just want a. Um, if you just want a library box setting somewhere that you have convenient plugs, um, convenient, you know. Yeah, and that's actually a follow-up question that Joey just had too. Was um, can it be plugged into a stationary location and be used as a self-service digital library? So I know your purpose sure. of doing this, Jason, was similar to the Pirate Box, portable, small, take it wherever yep. you want to. But yep. there, this question is: Well, what if I just have something that isn't that tiny little portable thing? I can just set this up permanently somewhere, and absolutely, you could using the same concept yep, and everything. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. No. No. No reason at all that that wouldn't work. Here's the first part okay. Of that question, all right. And actually, uh, okay. Good. We got uh, a couple other questions here coming through. Uh, Rachel is asking uh, two questions. Uh, I like these. Um, <laughs> can you can, can you search the content on the box, and can is there any way to get usage stats back out of it? Not yet. Um, the uh, no, the, the current version, version one, uh, as I'm calling it, uh, kind of cheekily because that means that there will be a version two, right? Um, version one is very bare bones. Uh, it it is literally a device, you know, a a download download this file device. Um, one of the most often requested things that I have I had people ask about is a some form of of statistics, right? One of the benefits is that it's completely anonymous. There's no logs kept. There's no record of, of who connected or when they connected or anything like that, um, which is, I think, from a library point of view, a positive. 
but um, people do want to know whether or not it's being used. Um, so w one of the things that I am ho that I'm planning on and working toward reversion to is some form of simple texture for how many times you know things have been downloaded. Um, still want to avoid the privacy issues and you know recording IPs and all that. I don't want any of that to happen. Mm -hmm. But for uh, for the purposes of simple, you know, Jane Eyre was downloaded five times. That I can I I think can be done, and that's something that's an that's an upgrade that I I'm hoping is coming um, and, in and, version two. And searching. Searching and, Ser searching is. Hmm. Yeah, searching is harder, but also possible. Um, the uh, uh, that's actually the first. You're the, the, the that's the first time anyone's asked me about searching it. Mm -hmm. And um, the um, I, I, I ordered it. It doesn't seem like it would be that hard. Although search means you have to have an index, and indexes have to live somewhere. And, Right, you would have to see how that gets architected on something this rudimentary. And and I'm sure you're willing to let anybody help you write code, right? <laughs> Is it? I mean, Jason, have we lost you? Uh, Jason, can you hear us? Yeah, we're breaking up. Oh yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay, I think we got it. It's cleared itself up. Um, so yeah. Oh boy. Okay, folks, we're just gonna pause for a moment here and let's see if we can get the the line to clear itself up. Is there something you can answer? Some of these, like what types of media? Yeah. Okay, Jason, you want to try again real quick? Okay, we're not getting reports of uh, people, uh, audience having issues, so at this point we're going to guess uh, kind of the, um, the sound is at Jason's end, so we're going to let him pause for just a moment, and maybe this will clear up. Um, one of the questions that's outstanding that I think I can, I can pretty much answer again from Joey is, uh, what other types of media can be stored on the library box? Um, as I understand it, I've, I've tried to set one of these up myself. Um, you can pretty much put anything you want on the storage. The USB uh, device plugged into it is um, is basically your hard drive, your your storage. And so, if you want to put MP3 files on there, if you wanted to put uh, eBooks, in this case, is what Jason was doing. Uh, I don't see any problem with that. And if we get Jason back uh, cleared up on the line, uh, he can correct me if I'm wrong with that. Um, someone is also asking about uh, DRM issues. There, there is no DRM uh, on this device, so um, there's no DRM server, there's nothing to check DRM, things like that, so you would want to put content on it that is uh, DRM free, and again, I'll, I'll let Jason uh, clarify if that's an issue. Uh, Jason, there we go. Uh, things Sounds out? a little better now. Okay. Yeah, Great. there we go. Yay. We're all clear now. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so let's, let, let's try that again. That was very... Yeah, that was a, a little bit of internet internet static. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you were you were right on both counts. Um, anything that can be served digitally theoretically could be served by this, as long as there's no DRM to impact the ability for the person to open it. Right. Um, so the 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 server is as simple a web server as it can possibly be, and uh, there my guess is there's not a whole lot of room. I've not looked into it. There's not a, not a whole lot of room in there to kind of leverage something like an Adobe, you know, an, an Adobe uh, digital rights management server uh, in there. So it is DRM-free material, but I have um, served uh, audio, video, um, uh, music, et cetera, off of it without any without any issues. The um, the uh, with just a few people connected. As a matter of fact, you can actually stream both music and movies off of it. Um, I've had uh, I put Night of the Living Dead on it, and uh, had people stream Night of the Living Dead to their phones from the from the box. Mm -hmm. So, 
Okay. Um, which what what Wi-Fi signal is it? Is this device running? It's an 802.11n. Oh, it is n. All right. Well, yeah, yeah you, can, you can you can you can stream pretty well off of that. So. Yeah, it's 802.11n. So. All right. Um, one one more question outstanding here, which might get us into uh, maybe you showing some code or the process as much as you can uh, for for, sure. for getting this to work. Um, since the media is stored on the USB stick, mm -hmm. how how is it that it knows to get the media off the USB stick? And um, my, yeah. my my simple answer is it's in the code. Um, <laughs> yeah. that that's actually the simple answer, but um, I'm happy to talk a little bit. I think that's probably a good jumping off point for sure. the, like, how, how do you build one, right? So, um, all right. So let's you start. Um, so, okay, so to build a library box, you start with a, um, you, you unbox your, uh, and again, for, for purposes of the, uh, for, for, for my purposes, you unbox an MR3020. Unbox the little $40 TP-Link router. The first thing you have to do is actually create a pirate box. Um, library box is a set of customizations to pirate box. So it's kind of a three big steps three big steps to make Lex. The first is you flash the router with the NWRT firmware. So the first thing that you would do is get your get your router, box your router, download the OpenWRT. Uh, there's actually a link right on this Pirate Box page, which is linked right off of the main kind of library box, um, library box page, jasongraffy.net slash library box. So if you, uh, you download the OpenWRT firmware, and flashing the firmware is very, I, I will say, very straightforward. There's a, a button in the, uh, in the interface to, the, um, to the, the box that says upgrade firmware. You point that at the uh, OpenWRT firmware that you downloaded. A box, uh, you connect your box to the computer. You know, throw the firmware on there. It reboots. And sorry about that. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to unplug my phone which I'm doing right now. And it happens to the best of us. All right. It does. So busy setting up my fancy camera. Um, whee, fancy camera. Anyway, so you, uh, you flash, flash it with OpenWRT. That's the first step. So the first thing you do is kind of, it's not exactly the same, but you're, you're jailbreaking the, the box, right? You're, you're creating being a software and you can do other customized um, customized programming on it. So you, um, you put OpenWRT on there. OpenWRT is a Linux-based piece of firmware. So it, it kind of changes the box into a tiny little Linux box. And um, if you're at all familiar with uh, the underpinnings of Linux, the rest of this will seem a little more normal. Uh, if you are not it may sound a little Greek, but uh, again, it's if you can follow steps cleanly, I think you can do this. Except you, Michael. Um, Th thank you, Jason. <laughs> I will take. So I, I, you. Yeah, we'll, you're, we'll you're explain. Welcome. You're welcome. Well, yeah, we'll we'll explain what I did once he gets through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. So you so you flash with OpenWRT. You so that sets the stage. Then. You go through the process that's outlined here on the Pirate Box page to load Pirate Box onto it, and it's a uh, what a dozen steps, fifteen steps, something like that. Um, there are some uh, command line things you have to do. You can see some code in here. You actually have to get in and modify some files and save some files. Again, it, it's not terrifically hard. It's just technical and detail-oriented. So you go through the uh, the Pirate Box install, and when you finish with the Pirate Box install, 
you move over to the library box code, and there are really only two files. There's two files that are different in um, from library box. They're customizations to the interface, basically. There's two files, one called Droopy, which is the web server, a Python-based web server for uh, the OpenWRT firmware. And then Pirate Box, which is the Pirate Box uh, setup file. Just a, uh, a uh, I'll actually show you Pirate Box. It's a set of settings that define. This is the this is the Apple Pirate Box common code. Uh, it's a set of settings that define um, pieces of the interface of uh, of Pirate Box. So I've changed Pirate Box common. I changed Droopy dot py, the Python-based, you can see again, code, 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 um, to alter the interface to what I wanted it to do for library. Uh, set up a pirate box, and then you replace two files on the box, one Droopy and two pirate box, and you boot, and you've got, so, yeah, normally, I've done this a few times. It takes, um, you know, if you set aside a couple of hours, two hours, um, it's not, again, it's fiddly, but it's not, um, it's not uh, terribly difficult. The one thing that can go wrong is what went wrong for Michael, and I will let Michael explain what went wrong for him. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so you know, I only half blame Jason for this. No. Um, so I'm for, for anybody on the line who's who's looking at this code and looking at these steps and going, oh boy, you know that seems like a bit much. I am not a coder. Okay, I I, I do have a, a rudimentary understanding of of Linux, of the command line. I do have a Linux box at home, so so the commands it was telling me to issue were, were understandable. There there's some FTP involved, there's some telnet involved, um, there's some text editing involved. But you know if you can do that sort of stuff, following the directions is not bad. You don't have to edit all of that code that Jason was showing you. That's Jason's job. Um, <laughs> the the I saw Jason demo this at um, Computers and Libraries in March, and I went, I'm going to go do this. Mm -hmm. So I bought one of these routers for 40 bucks. Um, I bought a battery pack. I, I don't know. Um, it was a different one than, than Jason's, but I think it was like 60 in my case, uh, which I still have, and that still works great, and I'm glad I own it because it works on my phone too. Um, so I, I sat down and I started going through these instructions. The installing the Pyrobox instructions, I thought, worked a little better if I did it on my, my Linux box instead of on my Windows box. Um, and or on a laptop instead of a desktop. And I'm, I'm not sure why, but it, that helped. But at a certain point, I had, I had gotten Pirate Box running absolutely fine. Then I went to customize it to Library Box, and I was following Jason's instructions. And at one point, I wasn't able to do exactly what Jason said. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of did the whole, you know, if it doesn't work, force it. I don't remember exactly what I did, but I, I created my own little workaround. <laughs> <laughs> and, and darn it, I got that thing installed. And this is the one and only time I can say of all the projects like this I've tried, I did end up bricking the router. I now have a $40 box that doesn't do anything. But, yes. you know, yeah, it, it can happen. I mean, I, I, we don't want to tell anybody that, you know, it can't. But I will admit, I did something that was kind of outside of the instructions. Now it turns out, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong, that <laughs> Library Box yeah. had, or excuse me, Pirate Box had created newer software that didn't work with your custom code, and I had installed the newer yeah. software. Therefore, that's why it didn't work. And instead of talking to Jason first and saying, what did I do wrong, I went ahead and tried to fix it myself and completely blew it up. Yeah. Um, so... You know, when we say it's, se it's 7 out of 10, it's 7 out of 10 because, yes, there's command line. It's also you really have to follow the instructions carefully. Yeah, yeah, if you, you, you definitely don't want to deviate much. And, <clears throat> yes, the, um, the version, at this point, the version that Library Box is built for is an older version of 
pirate box because pirate box is under active development and I just can't keep up. Um, version two of library box will be using whatever the newest version of pirate box is at the time. So, so, so we will look. leapfrog forward, but for now, yes, it is an older version. Okay, so, so, so here's my question for you. Have you updated your instructions to point to the older version of Pirate Box to make sure we're downloading the yes. right one? Okay. <laughs> as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I have. Yeah, see, uh, this is why I only and, half blame Jason in that he just said, go get Pirate Box. So I did, and I got the latest version, and, yeah. you know, that, that's what happened, so. Whoop. All right, yeah. good. Yeah, Thank you. I linked to the, to the, to the version that is appropriate, so. I, I will um, be doing this again. So it, just, it is possible to screw it up. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. It is possible to screw it up. Um, and 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 I will say I have. Like I have been going through it, skipped a step, and gone. Dah! Um, I have not totally bricked it. I've been able to go back and recover, but um, it, you do you have to focus and pay attention while you're doing the steps. Right. We do have so. one other question that's come in. Um, it says it looks as if the count, uh, the code is downloadable. Sure. You don't need to retype it. You don't need to copy paste. You can just download the code files directly, correct? Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, they're freely available on GitHub. Um, you can download the files and, and do, do what you will with them. So... Okay. It, it, Jason, this is the one part it, in the picture you have up here right now that uh, I really uh, like. Uh, about I was it. going to show. I have. I got. Uh, I think we just glitched on the sound again. I'm sorry. Oh no, that's it. No, this is one thing that I really like about it is that the okay. how you carved out. Is that better. Yeah, you're sounding good now. Are we sounding okay? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. In fact, yeah, you carved great. out this book to to actually store it in. I think that's that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. What was what? And I I don't know if I've ever yeah. known, what book is that or what? Yeah, I needed that? A, I needed a home. Yeah. What book it, was it that? It was the March of Democracy, Volume One. <laughs> the March of Democracy, Volume One, by James Truslow Adams. Just curious, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll say when I when I was starting. It was a. Uh, it was. Go ahead. I was just going to say that yeah, it was a it was a discard. It was a a dupe. That we were discarding here in the library, and uh, it was the right size. That was really the only driving factor. It was the right size. Uh, I was going to say, as as I was uh, attempting to put mine together, and and I will still do this one day. I think that this show will get me to to try buy again. another one, try again. Um, I had to spend a couple of hours trying to figure out the exact right book that I wanted yeah. to use to put this in. Uh, totally and I think right. I, I was going to go with a, an old copy of Future Shock. I, I thought that would Oh, very nice. That would have been, <laughs> that's a, yeah, very good. Very good choice. Yeah, the, um, the, the packaging certainly, right, is, it helps. It, it, it's, uh, it, it, it is certainly not necessary. I have just thrown the battery and the library box in my, uh, in my backpack and walked around with it. But the book, you know, putting it inside the book adds a, adds a certain je ne sais quoi. <laughs> so, uh, so here, here's kind of the, the big question for you, Jason. And, and, and anybody else has questions, you know, feel free. We, we, we've sure. got time and, and send questions in. And you kind of touched upon this, I think, at kind of the, the end of, of your first part. But, okay, so what's, what do we do with it? <laughs> yeah, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, so I, I'm gonna, I, I, will, I will answer this with a story. So um, I blogged about this a couple of times on my, on my blog, on uh, jasongraffy.net, um, but... The, the real kind of turning point for me in understanding that what you could do with this. When I, when I first built it, my thought was, this is awesome for places that don't have the internet, right? And we certainly, all of us probably know in our communities somewhere where there are people that own cell phones but don't have the internet. This is a pretty common thing even in this country, but it's like doubly common, right, around the world. Um, and I was contacted by, um, I've been contacted by librarians that serve Native American reservations, right, where um, the patrons have, have cell phones but no internet. 
um, this is a mechanism of distributing digital files to them that just works and you you know it's easy um, I've had uh, people talk about putting these in their uh, in their bookmobiles right so as you drive around and um, and deliver books to different places people can also get digital books um, as as you do um, I've had people contact me about using them in um, in uh, in, in Africa for distribution of things way off the grid. Um, but the one that really touched me, the, 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 the request, the, the story that really touched me was a, um, an, a teacher of English in a country that I am, he asked me not to name, but in, a, uh, in one of the countries that is um, significantly less free and um, significantly more controlling of their information than, uh, than, than, than here in the U.S. And he was teaching English to uh, these, these lower, uh, lower uh, ability, kind of lower income level uh, people. And in this country, the, the information scarcity only affects those without the economic advantage to overcome it. So if you're, if you're middle class or above, you're making enough money that you can afford to buy, you know, VPN access or something that allows you to get the information that you need, um, regardless of the governmental control of the inform of the of the internet. But if you're in the lower income bracket and the people that most need to learn English, most need to learn uh, to you know to have some education. They don't have the economic ability to bypass this information wall, and he, you know, he contacted me and said, "I've been using Pirate Box for this, but people don't trust me. <laughs> like that Pirate Box um, doesn't seem safe, and Library Box is exactly what I need and what other people in my position need to be able to provide p these these students." with you know educational materials that they simply can't get because of the government and that was the story that was the 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 use that made me go okay i get how powerful this could be if it was done well so um that actually has driven all of the work that i've done so far on version 2 which is mainly there are, you know, I'm looking at bells and whistles to make the interface better and stuff, but the, the big kind of what I want out of version 2 is to make the installation kind of push button so that there isn't this kind of three steps and 12 steps in step 2 that you have to do in order to get it working. What, um, yes, please. What I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do uh, with version 2 is make it so that it's a, a kind of a single bundle and you can you know put it on the box and then have a working library box um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find coders that are willing to help me with that because I, 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 I get code and I've clearly done a little bit but uh, that level of customization is a little beyond me I need I need somebody with a, a developer brain um, to be able to, to help me with it I'm, I'm I'm trying to find someone now that, uh, that that's willing to dig in, um, but that the if I could provide the code that would let those educational moments happen, right? The 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 power of li of this project is that it isn't connected to the wider internet, and that it allows the delivery of files to people who need them, even when there isn't the ability to get them off the off the wider internet um, and it's anonymous so the the um, there's no kind of trace being left um, in areas where that might be a problem so that you know I'm uh, that inspired me to keep working on the project I mean when I did I was like oh cool look neat trick and then um, I, I put the code out and I was like yay uh, but then when I, when I when I got this email uh, from uh, and you know, spoke with this uh, with this this English teacher in uh, 
in, in this foreign country, I that made me kind of look at it in a different way. So uh, I'm 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 working on it, um, trying to find some people to help me. But uh, I think it has some possibility to be uh, a really interesting. Um, a really, really interesting way of getting information to people who need it. So, yeah, I, I love when I ask a, a, a question and get an answer like that that I wasn't expecting at all. <laughs> that, that's spectacular. Thank, thank you for that. And that actually gives me a, you know, I was kind of a, at a yeah, that's kind of cool stage. And I, I yeah. think my you just convinced me otherwise on this. And I wish I could code at that level. I you know yeah. help. Um, but yeah, it, it 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 totally it totally changed the way I was looking at the project. I was like, "Oh, you mean this could actually like do that?" <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, um, the, um, the 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 secondary hardware that I that I showed you the the smaller, cheaper one, right? Mm -hmm. The smaller version of the TP Link that I've got on the on the screen now. The this is actually from. Um, uh, in in the East Asian market, it's in the in the in, in China, Korea, a um, few other markets, Taiwan. Um, in this little box, costs about twelve dollars American in uh, in those markets, <clears throat> which is the reason that I'm trying to you know make the code work on it. What what so, what what did you pay for it once you added like shipping from Taiwan and stuff? That's <laughs> <laughs> um, a little more than that, but um, a little more than that. But but again, right? Like, you know, this is forty dollars here in the U.S. This is you know twelve dollars U.S. in in uh, in the rest of the world. Right. And uh, for for twelve dollars, if you know if, if I can if I can make the code work and get um, you know make a twelve dollar library that a teacher can use for all of their instructional materials like that's just that's that's know, cool mm -hmm. yeah that's no. pretty cool that, that, that <laughs> it's, is great. it's pretty cool <laughs> all right um, we have one one question outstanding here which um, maybe you can well I'll just ask you because you know the version numbers at this sure. point uh, the question sure. directly is if I install library box version one onto mm -hmm. pirate box 0.5.1. Would I brick my router, <laughs> or would there just be yes. Off UI? To, yes. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you do it. I don't know about bricking, but it, it 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 almost certainly wouldn't work because the Pirate Box 0.5.1 is um, the the version number. I believe it's 0.2.4. Yeah, 0.2.4 is the last version that I've been able to confirm of Pirate Box. The Library Box customizations work for. So you have to mm -hmm. go back to the older one. Yeah. At the moment. So you have to, yeah. yeah, you have to use one of the. Uh, it's not even significantly old. Yeah. I, I did two point point two point four was the current version in January February, so they've iterated to point five point one or point five point two since then, um, and the 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 most recent version of Pirate Box, which is point five point one or point five point two. Is uh, does have a lot of neat other features and things that I think Library Box could actually use. So the the next version is going to be based on that code base. But um, but yeah, it, it, you you don't want to use the most you don't want to use 0.5.1. You want to use 0.4.2 uh, for your Library Box playing. Yeah. Um, supposedly, there are like recovery instructions, as Jason's mentioned, and I trust me went through yeah. those. And I, I, there's one last set of recovery instructions where I might be able to unbrick my router, but it actually involves opening it up and soldering things. Um, <laughs> and and I figured yeah. with my skill set, I'm just better off buying another forty dollar router. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay. I would be right there with you, Michael. Yep. So. Um, okay, and Tyler adds, just wanted to add that the WR703N, which is the smaller blue one, oh, he found it for $23 shipped to the U.S. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. So, there you go. But the code doesn't work yet. Well, it, it's one of those situations where theoretically it should. Mm -hmm. I just have not been able to do it yet. 
Okay. So, so um, right so now, your, you want your mileage vary. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah. now, now it's how comfortable are you with yeah. not following the directions exactly or trying to fix something? Yes. Before, so. Okay. It, exactly. Yes. The other the other downside to using the the uh, the uh, always offering the blue one the 703N is that when you when you launch it and you you have to go through the original the initial OpenWRT steps the interface is all in uh, Chinese or Japanese so it's a little harder to figure out exactly what you want to be doing but uh, okay. you can do it if you try. Um, and it, Tyler here, who just mentioned that, is, is says that they do have the same hardware components, and he's willing to maybe help out and look into it. So here's the question. How can people who are interested in mm. helping get a hold of yes. you? Great. Um, there is so two, two things. If you go to the main library box page, jasongriffey.net slash library box, I've got two links, one uh, at the very top. One is discussion, and that will link you to a Google group that, um, is slowly gathering members. We've got maybe a dozen members now, but uh, more are uh, more coming along. Where uh, people are, uh, I'm hoping, going to start sharing news and uses and hacks and whatever about LibraryBox. So uh, a Google group that you can join, a uh, little listserv. And then there's right next to discussion. There is a link that says contact, and that will get you um, my email, which I should have clicked, but oh well. <laughs> All right. So that'll and, get you, that'll be direct, yeah. Okay. And, and last question also coming in from, from the audience there. Um, have you considered uh, putting these together and selling them complete with sticker uh, uh, directly? <laughs> I, 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 have, I have considered this. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I am, I will say I am investigating the possibility of doing a Kickstarter for them. Oh. Um, that if if I can get the code to where I think it needs to be, um, if the, the the this is this is branded hardware, right? This is a TP Link MR thirty twenty. It's produced by company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I am willing to bet that if I can get the code where I need it to be, that I can find a lab a white label manufacturer for the boxes that would get them to me for significantly less than $40 each. Um, if that is something I can make happen, then I am thinking about that. Yes. And, and, so. and, and to clarify, this is completely outside of your day job, right? I mean, this, is, this has nothing to do with my day job. Right. I, I, I did all of the coding, the website, everything totally off. This, actually, this webinar is the only thing I've done <laughs> <laughs> for this project during my day job. So, um, so yes, uh, this, is, this is an outside project. Yep, but um, so so but you certainly have, in in your copious ahead. amounts of spare time, right? Is this yes, yes, exactly. This is the copious amounts of spare time. Yes, <laughs> this has been eating eating all of my brain cycles for a few months now, um, and yeah. So between the coding and the thinking about how to make this something people could buy, um, you know if. I think that if I could find a way to make these purchasable for forty or fifty dollars, I think that I would find more than a couple of people that might want them. So, so um, sign me up because I know I've already yeah. spent that much of my time. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's you know. So, so I'm looking at that, but you know, uh, bringing hardware to market not exactly a trivial undertaking. Yes. So, true. so we'll we'll see how quickly that may or may not happen. All right. Well, Jason, again, we want to thank you for, for, for being on the show and, and, and uh, demoing this. I, I think we've got sure. – um, we had a lot of questions come in for, for our average episode. I think we're above that. Oh, yeah. Um, and um, encouraging me that I'm going to try this again um, in Great. another month. Or, I, I have other things to ahead of the line, but I think I'll, I'll definitely get there. Maybe, maybe by Internet Librarian I'll, I'll have a working Excellent. Review. Um, so thank you. Um, this isn't officially a tech talk, but I, I do have one other story I want to share with folks. And Jason, I'll, I'll just start by, by asking you a question before we uh, take control sure. back. Is, um, are you using two-factor authentication on your Google accounts? 
<laughs> you know, I uh, okay. So I'm gonna I will say one more thing about LibraryBox really fast, sure. and then I'll answer that question. One more thing is there are libraries actually using it. Um, like you know, actual libraries actually using it, um, and I'm going to look it up because uh, library. Sorry, I'm, I should have uh, should have made sure I knew exactly where this was uh, before I uh, before I got on. But um, while he's doing that too, I'll throw in that we will put all these links in the show notes. Yes. So, but, um, yeah, the Lake Forest Library. Um, guy the Matt Near uh, at the Lake Forest actually one of these that they are uh, they built a library box and are using it to distribute um, art in the community. So their artists are contributing things, digital things that they want distributed, and then they are in turn putting it on library box and distributing it to the to the to the uh, patrons at at festivals and things. So they've got some really cool stuff. So Lake Forest Library. Uh, um, if you want to look that up and throw that in the show notes, so to speak, they, they're doing some cool stuff with it. Um, I had two-factor authentication on for a very long time, and eventually it just bugged me to the point where I turned it off. Okay. Fair so enough. So I, I do <laughs> not have two-factor authentication on. I did, however, disconnect all of my Macs from Find My Mac. Yeah. Okay. So, so you know what I'm talking about here. Yes. All right. So, 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 so we'll we'll use that as our segue. Thank you uh, again, right. Jason. That that was wonderful. No We're problem. gonna go ahead Thanks, and guys. Uh, take presentation back here for for just a few more minutes uh, before we go on. Um, what we're talking about is there was a, an article in Wired Magazine the last couple of days, and this is this one right down at the bottom of the list here, how Apple and Amazon security flaws led to my epic hacking. This is a Wired uh, author who uh, got his accounts hacked between uh, his Apple ID, his Amazon account, into Google, in all sorts of other things, not because somebody guessed his, his lame password, um, but because they just were able to gather enough information online get access to, uh, um, through social engineering, some uh, information, was able to then call Apple and get his password changed, and because of that, they were able to then get to his Google account and his other accounts, and basically ended up wiping his hard drive, uh, wiping his Twitter account, wiping his iPhone, all sorts of things. There's, there's morals here about backing up your data. Uh, there's morals here about picking good passwords. Um, I'm not trying to make everybody super mega paranoid here, but this story is actually making uh, the people who are usually a little paranoid anyways super mega paranoid. Um, one of the things you can do, and this is one of the other articles here that I have because I don't want to talk about how to pick a good password yet again, um, but if you are a heavy Google user, there is something called two-step authentication, which at the most basic level, once you turn it on, if you log into your Google account from a computer that you've never logged into before, it will ask you for an additional piece of information. For example, since I've set this up yesterday, the first time I log into Google from a new machine, let's say I'm on the road somewhere and I use a hotel computer, um, it will send me a text message with a special code that I then have to type into Google before it lets me in. The idea being is that I have my password, something I know, but I also have my phone, which is something I have. That's two-factor authentication. I, I will agree with Jason on principle. It can be a pain, especially if you use a lot of different computers on a regular basis, but it is something I think you should, should read these three articles that we'll, we'll post in the show notes, something to seriously consider. Um, and, you know, kind of the, the days of maybe just having picked a good password, assuming you have, may be coming to an end. Uh, so just something I want everybody to be aware of. This is a story that's been breaking in the last couple of days. So I just want to take this opportunity to mention it. I think that the even more important part about this is not, it is, I mean, all of the important, there's lots of things that you can do to help things be more secure, and these articles mention them. But an important part about this is, as he says in the Wired article he wrote, explaining exactly how all this happened, and it's what Michael mentioned, and I 
I think maybe some people may not know what this means, the social engineering. Uh, that just meant that this hacker guy called Amazon and called Apple and convinced them with what he said to them over the phone to over the phone give him this guy's personal login information mm -hmm. or to change his login information and passwords. That's social engineering. That's, there's nothing you can do about that. There's no this is an issue with Apple and Amazon also mm -hmm. having security, lack of security. They're, they've already made changes. Apple has already announced that we are now telling everyone on our phones, you never give out that information over the phone. It's just a done deal, never again. Um, so I think even that just as important as what you can do to secure your stuff is back up everything <laughs> because social engineering you can't do anything about someone being convincing and saying oh I am so and so and oh my gosh my grandmother this happened to her and I need your help and can you please 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 there's nothing you can do to stop that but you can protect and not lose as this man did a year's worth of pictures of his daughter growing up yeah um, back up everything do that that is what you you can definitely do that and that is what you can help to protect yourself from any of this that could possibly happen to you. I don't want to scare the crap out of people with that, but that's something you can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and But you can do things to keep your stuff safe, even if they do manage to get your information and wipe your computer and kill your phone and whatever. You at least have everything that was on your stuff, on your devices, somewhere else, separate, not linked to all that. Right. And your stuff is still there, now you just got to get your other mm -hmm. you know, it, Then it's a real... More it's still just pain. A, it's, a, but, it's a pain, but, but it's, it's more not of an loss. inconvenience, not a personal devastating possible right. you know, loss. And and I just pulled this up book here, this book up here, The Art of Deception by Kevin Mitnick, who was a, a who is a well well known previous hacker who used social engineering. If you're interested in the concept of social engineering and what that means, I would highly recommend this book. So I'll just I'll just throw that out there and thought of it while Krista was talking. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's uh, it yep. for today. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and yep. Okay, well, thank you very much for um, attending the show this morning. Thank you to Jason, everyone who was here and, and had all the great questions. Um, this session was recorded, so it will be available to you later today, tomorrow. Um, to, for anyone who attended, you can watch it again. You can share it with all your friends, whatever. Um, we um, These shows, all of our Campus Live shows are sorry, free and open to anyone to watch the live shows or the recordings. Um, and I hope you'll join us next week when, if you want to go ahead and click on that, our topic is Renew Yourself, Your Library, and Your Career. And we will have Michael Porter online, there he is, um, with us from... Seattle? Is he in Seattle? Yeah. I think he's still in Seattle. Yeah, West Coast. <laughs> West Coast. Um, who is the CEO of Library Renewal, which is a group, an organization that he has created with some other people to um, help research and help libraries dealing with the um, offering electronic content out there, trying to get that more organized and grassroots type thing. Um, so Library Renewal is something that he is working on very, very passionately about getting e-content and libraries being able to use it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, he's going to come on and talk to us about that and about um, use, get, getting ahead in your career, renewing yourself and getting more involved. What can you do at your job to just keep getting things going and change and um, motivation, I think, is there you kind of his thing. Um, he's <laughs> he, a looks, very, he looks very motivated in that picture. I think I, he's, I believe he was somewhere in Hawaii or somewhere. I mean, look at oh, the well, necklace he's got on. I'd, I'd I don't be know. motivated in Hawaii. So. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Michael Porter will be with us next week, so you can join us um, for that. And you can see there as well, um, if you want to, we do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live, so um, you can follow us there, and we announce all of our shows there, any updates to things, recordings and everything else will be announced on there. So if you do um, want to, you can um, like us on Facebook. Great. And that's it for today, then. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.